All right. So, uh, very late where I am, and I'd probably be in bed, but uh, I'm not. Instead, I'm up making videos. It's been a while since I've I've made a bunch of videos, and tonight I've been on kind of a, a spree, made a bunch of follow-up videos, follow-up four, and uh, I wanted to make a video for Game of Thrones, at least, because they put out an interesting preview for a deluxe expansion coming out called Wolves of the North. It's their Stark-themed expansion. It comes out, I think they said second quarter of 2016, so in the next summer, which will give us a good good amount of time to get some chapter packs in, which is good, because the other houses are going to need some time to adjust, because there are some nasty cards in here. In, in this expansion, they reveal a bunch of neat cards for the, for the uh, what you call it here, Wolves of the North, and they also reveal some cards from the expansions that I hadn't seen quite as detailed. So we're going to start off with Catelyn Stark. She's a new version of Catelyn Stark that's going to come in Wolves of the North. She's expensive. She costs seven. Um, so she's going to be hard to get out. But she's very much worth it, especially in the Stark deck. You got the seven cost. She's got an Intrigue and Power icon and five strength. Uh, House Tully, Lady, and the seven keywords. And she has the uh, special abilities of Catelyn Stark. Gets plus one strength for each power she has. And Reaction. After a Stark character you control is sacrificed or killed, Catelyn Stark gains one power, limit twice per round. So she's pumpable. Uh, maybe not as pumpable as, say, Tywin or even Robert. But she doesn't lose her pump like they do. Once you get those tokens on her, as long as you can keep those tokens on her, she keeps her pump. And she has it in Intrigue. So she is very powerful in an area where the Starks are traditionally very weak. The only drawback is that cost. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I, I'm going to have to put up with the cough, unfortunately. I found out with my follow-up videos, sometimes when I hit the mute button on my microphone, it doesn't unmute when I unmute it. Uh, so I don't want to deal with that. Uh, but I've been suffering from the flu. Or I had the flu like three weeks ago, and it really kicked my butt for about a week. And... Uh, it's left me with this cough that just will not go away. Anyway, I, I think she is a reasonable update from the Catelyn in the base set. N nothing wrong with Catelyn in the base set. The Catelyn in the base set is is a nasty, nasty card. Uh, but this Catelyn, imagine if you put Sirio's training on her. You know, that, that would make her like an 8 or 9 cost card. But very much worth it. Every icon and, you know, potentially pumping her twice around you even even with some modest pumps getting up her up to a seven or eight that that's a that's a scary scary card let's see we've got the blackfish uh he is he's six so he's not cheap himself warfare and power four strength with renown while the Blackfish has four or more power, each House Tully character you control does not kneel when declared as an attacker. Reaction. After you win a Warfare Challenge as the attacking player, draw one card. Limit once per phase. So he's got kind of a neutered insight, renown, and an amazing ability once he gets that four power on him. Now imagine him out with this version of Catelyn. So, I mean, they're expensive. You're, you're going to have to find... If you're going to be fielding these cards, you're going to have to find a way to get some gold. Um, or reduce their cost. Which is, it certainly isn't impossible. Especially with some other cards we're going to see coming up. And uh, they're both house loyal. So, you can only have them in Stark decks. If you notice, their crests have the little banners underneath. So, that means they are Stark loyal. You can only have these in a Stark deck. They cannot be in a banner fealty uh, banner agenda deck so that's the the blackfish we have uh, house tully septon it seems like a lot of the cards in this are going to be tully themed in this expansion going to be tully themed at least from the few cards we've seen here i imagine there'll be quite a few cards because it's, it's what they're calling a deluxe expansion so but he costs two has the power icon and at two strength he's an ally with the house tully keyword and the seven keyword Marshalling action. Discard one power from a character you control to reduce the cost of the next House Tully or the seven character you marshal this phase by two. So that's that's steep. You know, you never want to get rid of power. Um, 
that's rough. That is a steep, steep penalty. But we've already seen uh, Tully, uh, House Tully, so you can get the Blackfish, right? Because it's House Tully or the Seven. Uh, works on Catlin. So that, again, I'm always loath to say get rid of power. But to reduce the cost of something by two, mm, that is tempting. Especially if you have no other options. I guess it's at the very least, it's a good last measure of defense to get something out. If you just cannot get to that seven, the house totally subject may be the way to get you over that hump. Let's see. So now we have, <coughs> excuse me, Winterfell. Each start character you control gets plus one strength, and it costs four gold. And reaction. After a challenge is initiated, Neil Winterfell. Then, each player with a non-Winter plot card revealed cannot trigger card abilities until the end of the challenge. It's a Stark loyal card as well, so only Starks can play this card. Now, I'm of two minds of this. I think the abilities are fantastic. Giving all Stark characters plus one strength, phenomenal. And that reaction ability is really good. But there are two, I think, sizable limits on this card. One is the cost. Four gold is not cheap. You play this, you're pretty much not playing anything else major. Um, you know, that, that four cost is, is real steep. Now, granted, the, pump, the ability to pump starts is amazing. So it, it'd be hard for me to justify them you know, saying it was any lower. And then if, if you play a winter plot card... And it's not unreasonable to think that the Starks are going to have four or five out of their seven plot cards be winter-themed. You can just uh, kneel your... Uh, you kneel Winterfell, then each player with an own winter plot card cannot trigger card abilities until the end of the challenge. So that's tremendous. You know, that protects you from a great number of things. Um, and prevents your opponent from potentially saving their characters with any number of things. You know, so it, it kind of helps, <clears throat> excuse me, for the fact that you might be losing Catelyn to replace her with the Catelyn in this deck, but you still get her nifty ability. It's just, it's it does have, I think, two steep prices, the winter plot cards and the gold. And keep in mind that with if you've got Catelyn and you've got the Blackfish and you've got Eddard, you know, you're already looking at, at a very... Very expensive deck. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. That's rough. Now this next one isn't actually from the Wolves of the North. It's from one of the expansion packs. I think the first expansion pack, Taking the Black. It's the Seastone Share. It's for Greyjoy. And I think it's going to be uh, a no-brainer in any Greyjoy deck. It's Greyjoy Loyal. Only costs one gold. Interrupt. When claim is applied for an unopposed warfare challenge in which you are the attacking player, kneel your faction card to choose a character without attachments controlled by the losing opponent. Instead of the normal claim effect, kill that character. That is tremendous. And it, it goes even... De just that ability by itself is phenomenal. But the Greyjoys have this card called Throwing Act. And what it can do is when you win a warfare challenge, an opposed warfare challenge, you can discard, or sacrifice, I forget how, I mean, discard, it's much the same thing, discard the throwing axe to kill, to choose and kill one of the defending characters. So, now say you have, you're attacking with someone with the throwing axe. And it, it, with the Greyjoys, it's not unreasonable to think that you have a two-claim card. So say you're attacking with the throwing axe with a two claim card. Your opponent is now in a terrible position. Let's let's tack it on even further. Let's say you're the master of ships and your opponent is a rival. They've got a two claim card that is bumped up to three and you have the throwing axe. If you block and lose, they're potentially killing four people. One with the throwing axe and then three for their claim. And with this, they can choose... They can choose someone with the throwing axe that you, you've actively defended with, and then choose somebody not even... Well, in this case, no, because it's unopposed. Or you could go unopposed, 
only going to lose three, but they're still going to get to choose somebody because of the sea stone chair. You know, even on a regular challenge, you know, somebody where it's a one claim that's not bumped at all. It, it's 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 rough. Um, I it, it's a tremendous card, and I think it's going to make the Great Joys very very tough to face in warfare challenges. Now, this is coming from somebody who plays a Lannister deck that is exceedingly weak in warfare. I have one or two good warfare characters in there, but it's mainly for defense. So this this really terrifies me. Anything where an opponent gets to choose which of my characters dies terrifies me. Um, so yeah, so this this combined with the, that throwing ask, especially, it essentially assures you know the only way you can control it is controlling who you have blocking it. And even then, if you block it, you're potentially increasing the claim because they can use the throwing axe before the claim effect goes into into effect. And um, then you still have to suffer the claim. Um, so let me let me actually look up j just so we can go through everything. I'm gonna call up the core set here. And we will look up the throwing action. It's probably gonna be closer to the end. Oh, these are only H's, M's. Oh, there's R's. S's. And he's I don't like that they're all buzz. There we go. Throwing axe. So if we look at throwing axe. After you win a challenge in which the attached character is participating. As an attacker, sacrifice throwing axe to choose and kill a defending character. So if we look at, let me go ahead and call up the rules reference guide here. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Okay, Game of Thrones, rules reference. Let me get down to the timing table. go. Now let me just add this into OBS, add that window. Rules reference. There we go. So now if we look at our rules reference, we compare strength to determine the challenge winner. So right here, in between 4.2.2 and 4.2.3, you're going to use the axe. <clears throat> because it says after you win a challenge in which, attack, in which the attached character uh, in which the attached character is participating as an attacker sacrifice throwing axe. So after you win. So that happens right here. 4.2.2 So you will lose somebody here and then you have to apply the claim result two steps later. So, you can block it, potentially increase the claim by two, lose the person you're defending with, and then somebody else, the advantage being you get to choose the two, or not block, and your opponent chooses with the sea stone chair. So yeah, I, I think that's that's a tremendous combination that's going to make the Greyjoys terrifying. Uh, let's see, what else do we have? We have hard as, as Hard as Winter. It's a one-cost event. Play only if there's a Winter plot card in your used pile. After a start character you control is sacrificed or killed, put a start character with equal or lower printed cost into play from your hand. And they actually mention in here a, a really nice combination 
with Bran Stark. Interrupt. When the effects of an opponent's event would initiate, sacrifice Bran Stark to cancel those effects. So you use that ability to cancel something, and then you use Hard as Winter to put another Bran right into play. So you didn't really lose anything. Um, so that's that's a tremendous ability. You know, especially if you lose somebody expensive. Um, and it gives you a reason not to, to necessarily play duplicates, because there's a, a lot of ways you can, you know, lose characters without them being able to be saved. Um, so a very nice card, very reasonably priced. I think even the Starks could count on saving a gold. So let's see. Now there's some neutral cards and cards for other houses. Uh, this one's really neat. Stone Snake. I, I really like him. He's a, a ranger for the Night's Watch. Five cost. Only got the Warfare icon and four strength. But he has stealth. And this is the cool thing. His reaction ability. After Stone Snake bypasses a character using stealth, choose one of that character's keywords. Stone Snake gains that keyword till the end of the phase. So that's tremendous. That you know that that's a way to get him renowned on almost you know everything he does. Um, and and you know reasonably priced. It's just just the warfare icon is is the problem. Um, but it's not impossible to get other icons on him. And it, having a good warfare character never hurts. Let's see. We have to the Rose Banner. House Martell, obviously. Marshalling action. Choose a Martell character you control. Gain X gold, where X is that character's strength. Then sacrifice that character. So that's a good quick way to get gold, if you really need it. Um, and a good reason to put in some, some lower cost, two or three strength guys, if you just need to get that change real quick. You know, or even... Maybe you have a, um, I don't know, a number of ways you could use it, I think. Um, this one, I think, is a neat attachment for Baratheon. One one cost, condition, opponent's characters only. Attached character gains the full trait. Reaction, after attached character is declared as an attacker or defender, discard one card at random from the controller's hand. That's brutal. That's really, really nasty. Um... And then that they just note here, uh, deluxe expansion has been released between cycles. Uh, we are now changing this model to aid the regular release of deluxe expansions because of this new model. Deluxe expansions like Wolves of the North may be announced and released in the midst of a cycle. The two chapter packs remaining for the Westeros cycle will be announced in the following months. They seem to be taking their time with the releases, which I'm fine with. Um, then we can also see a little bit, like they brought back Frozen Solid, which is going to help the Starks tremendously. One cost condition, non-limited locations with a printed cost of three or lower only. Terminal, uh, treat attached locations, printed text box as if it were blank. So that is definitely worth having at least one in a Stark deck. I wish we could see more of the Winterfell Heart Tree, the art school. But there you have it, a bunch of new cards coming out in, in I mean, probably looking at five or six months for this. Um, but that sea stone seat should be coming out fairly soon, uh, I would imagine, because that's going to be in the first house pack. But a lot of good cards, I, I I really like them. I think there's a lot of ways that they can change the game without being overpowered and without uh, overtaking the game. Without suddenly you play these cards, oh, I'm going to win because I have these cards out. I don't think that's going to happen. And I think the the cards that the more powerful cards are even further hindered by being very expensive. And um, sometimes you're just going to find yourself sitting on seven cost cards, six cost cards, because you just can't get that gold. So I'm very excited. I think the Wolves of the North looks fantastic. I think uh, all the cards look interesting that I've seen. Some use in some way for everything that I've seen so far. So yeah, nope, very excited. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see some of the chapter packs coming out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, found something you enjoyed, you know, if it helped you out at all, feel free to give me a like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later.